Coming up next, Bookin' It discusses The Warden and The Wolf King. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Bookin' It. I'm your humble and eloquent host, Cooper Cobb. <laughs> Cooper Cobbs, and over there we got Isaiah Redsky. Hi. Tanner Lewis and Matthew Killingsworth are actually recording in the same room today. Yep, yes we are. Howdy, I'm here. Oh man, it's going to be a tough one with you guys in the same room, but we're willing to try. That's right, guys. Anyway, mm. if I'm doing my math right, this is our 20th episode. What do you guys have to say about that? Oh man, my eardrum. <laughs> when I heard Isaiah's voice, I Man, just guys. broke down, and I said, "Man, I we're know. never going to be able to do this again." Wait, yeah. what? What? I'm really I'm confused. I'm not explaining now. that. You should understand that, so we can move on if you don't understand that. Uh huh. <laughs> anyway, question mark. Twenty episodes. Twenty episodes, and here we are: the War and the Wolf King. I'm very excited still. Thank you to all our listeners. 20 episodes. Wow. That's, what is that? That's not half a year yet. We're almost to half a year. But still, that's a lot, guys. Thanks for listening with us. Okay. Anything else you want to talk about before we get into The Warden and the Wolf King? No, definitely not. No, I think we can get into the book now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, guys, Matthew, you said last episode, or not last, Monster in the Hollows episodes that you thought Monster in the Hollows was better than any of the other Wing Feather books so far. So far, now you haven't finished yet, but you think the Warden and the Wolf King is better than Monster in the Hollows? I think they're pretty close, but actually, I think I might still like Monster in the Hollows better, at least so far. We shall see at the end. We shall see. That's <laughs> what you guys keep promising. So, what part are you at? Um, I'm about two thirds of the way through. I'm at the part where uh, I just, I'm a little bit after the part where they finished up uh, talking about in Scree, so I'm at uh, the part where they're back uh, with the wing feathers again. Okay. Got it. Nice. All right, Tanner, did you read this one again for this? I know Isaiah, you did too. I gave my copy to Matt. I read it it like three weeks ago. I have not read it again. Um, I'm going straight off of my first time reading this again, so we'll see how this goes. All right, Isaiah, you said you read it three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, was it as good as you remember it to be? Oh, definitely. I mean, I read it for the first time, like, uh, how long ago was it? Like, just half a year ago, so, mm-hmm. yeah. It's really nice. good. Nice. Matthew, or everybody, I guess, do you think that the writing is better on this one than it is on, like, the other ones? Yeah, I, I was telling you guys earlier, I know, I've been noticing so many similes, especially from Artham, but the, there's just so many really great similes in here. Um, I was reading an interview of Andrew Peterson for this, and he said this one was definitely the hardest to write, but in his opinion, he thought it was one of the best ones. Um, do you guys, can you guys see why it would be hard to write? There's Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's so much stuff to talk about in it, like to finish it. Yeah. Yeah, a 90 something page or a 90 something chapter book, 500 something pages, four different parts, and it's taking everything that we've built up to in the last three books and all the characters, even the some of the minor ones that you didn't hear a lot about are coming back and they're all uh kind of play different well obviously play different roles, but like they all have roles in yeah. this story. Yeah, I call this like the pinnacle of uh, um, uh, Andrew Peterson's work in um, uh, the Wingfeather saga. It's just um, uh, all kind of built up to this like crescendo moment where um, all of his um, uh, like quiet planning in the background of uh, while he's been writing all these books kind of shows. Yeah. So I think Tanner, Isaiah, you think this one's the best one, right? What do you think sets it apart from the other three as the best book. Um ooh. And I just love the attention to detail. Like little details in the first, second book were brought back into this one and like actually had a really big like part in the story or just a part in it. Like a main part or something like that. 
Yeah, definitely. Like how it's all well thought out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like specifically, like in the second book when they're uh, at the Strander uh, campsite, I guess, and Tink is facing off against Claxton Weaver, and he ends up stealing his pwn and knocking him out and everything. Like Andrew Peterson easily could have just made Claxton Weaver specifically in the series for that one part, but he ended up bringing him back in this book and in the part two. When they're talking about Scree, he, he plays a really big part because he ends up trading on the Screeans and brings a bunch of fangs into Dugtown where uh, the big battle happens there. That's right. Mm-hmm. How about you, Tanner? Yeah, so um, I've brought this up before, but my favorite example for this is um, Sarah Cobbler. Sarah Cobbler was um, a brought up mm. in page four <laughs> of uh, um, book one and it was like super like subtle like you wouldn't notice it in any way it was just like a description but it ends up she is one of the um, a turning point like hinge point um, for the story like without her Janner probably wouldn't have gotten out of the fork factory like everything kind True. of hinged on that page four of book one which is what I really like mm-hmm. so also in this book besides I think in my opinion being being the better book the allegory is definitely more apparent here with the maker and everything being just a lot stronger did you guys uh, like that or do you even agree that the allegory is more important apparent here yeah, I agree. Oh, I definitely agree with that. I I think it's interesting. I started noticing this. I mean, now that I think about it, it's kind of been this way throughout the whole season. Or throughout season. the whole series, I guess. But uh, oh, I started noticing more in, the, in this book that everybody knows the maker is real. Everybody believes that, like, there right. is a maker. But it's it's like that's, that's when, like, foolishness, I guess, like we were talking about this in class, some, like, foolishness or unknowing... Uh, becomes evil is when you know there is a good and you know that's right but then you like intentionally choose uh, to do the opposite for power or glory or whatever you want yeah Tanner yeah I don't really have anything to add to that like just that actually you're gonna have to repeat that question I was listening to attentively to Matthew (laughs) <laughs> do you guys think that the uh, allegory is more apparent here? And if so, did you like that fact? Okay, so yes, I definitely um, do agree that the allegory is way more apparent here. It's just um, shown throughout the entire um, the entirety of this book that, like, the maker is real, like, he exists. You can walk with, like, the king can walk with him. The allegory is definitely way more apparent and very easily seen. It's just like the question of um, if they're going to choose it or choose to um, act on that or not, basically, in here. Hey, one of my favorite scenes from the Wing Feather Slug. Oh, wait, I can't talk about it because Matthew hasn't gotten there yet. Oh, well, I'll talk about it in, I guess, episode three. But moving on, what do you guys think about the siblings in this one and just the kind of interwoven sibling story and... But brotherly love and sisterly love in this book. I think I said in one of the one of the episodes on book two, North or Beaten, I, I started noticing how Lily like could you know control animals a little bit or like yeah that's that's when it was and she she had a thing with animals and music and stuff and I said is that gonna grow into something later in the series and you said well maybe kind of like what do you mean Cooper <laughs> that totally did. Like, now her whole thing is she can defeat Fangs by playing music on her whistle harp like crazy or commanding a bunch of dogs to go attack them. <laughs> it's pretty cool. That bit, like, just like the the um, brotherly love, the sisterly love, and just the interwoven stories of all of those is kind of what I meant. I mean, yeah. They're, they're, they're obviously, they're, they have to be best friends with each other because they move around so much and they have... I mean, they had, like, a few years in Glyphwood, but they never really had, like, great other friends that they loved as much as each other. So they're really close to each other, and then when they get separated and things like that, they they find ways, and uh, they're finding ways to, with Lily's music, to connect to each other and see each other, basically like a real-life FaceTime. Um, <laughs> and 
yeah, it's pretty cool. Like how them being uh, each other's brothers and sisters and being connected in that way through like their near and blood can like make them do so many special things together. Tanner, Isaiah. Uh, I'm trying to think of something else to say that's not what Matthew said. Wow, same's happening over here. All right. Yeah, I think it was uh, pretty important. I mean, like, without that, they wouldn't... I mean, I don't think they would have, like, done what they did or survived even at some points because that gave them hope, like, with the song. Give them hope to win or that they could win and all that. What's the devotion to each other as siblings? You guys are hitting right around it, but you're not, like... What do you guys think of, like, the brotherly love between Jainer and Kalmar or stuff like that? Well, I mean, it connected it, their brother. They had great brotherly love, like I said, but it also connected to their job. So, like, Kalmar was the king and Jainer was his protector, the throne warden. And so, but, like, their whole life had been built up, like, preparing them for that. Even before they knew it, they had always been in those same positions, kind of. And so I guess I thought that was the coolest part about their relationship to me and the same with Lily and Janner and Lily and Kalmar and all three of them together it's like how they all uh like their roles that you now see super clearly when you look back on it from this perspective they've had since the beginning i i don't know if that answers your question I, if not then i don't really know what you're trying to ask why don't you why don't you answer your own question for us so we know <laughs> what you're saying Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, some of my favorite parts in this book, and really this whole story is really about Jander becoming the Arth and Wingfeather, right? Especially at the end, which you haven't gotten except to yet. With, but Except without mental breakdown. Yeah, except for that. But it really is him really becoming the the protector. And like those are the best moments of the books when he protects Kalmar, does something with that. And they really just become even more together. Like, even in Monster in the Hollows, they were still kind of, you know, bumping against each other sometimes, but in The War and the Wolf King, they all really finally came together, I think, for the first time since maybe Glipwood. But anyway. Right. They're all equals, I guess. Well, no, not equals. And they They're just... Of, well, but they also... I, yeah, I know what you're saying. They all thought of each other as people, like, that they can trust each other fully. They had no, like, secrets. They had no uh, secret thoughts about each other they were just like these are my people like that all right well what do you guys think about the story formatting of this book do you like it with the parts and all that yeah this is probably like the favorite part of my book of this in this book is that um is the bonifer squoon part put in every put at the beginning Mm -hmm. of every part now what is so interesting about this um uh, format is that the bonifer squoon part always plays like a very initial role in that part like you'll never find that one of those Bonifer Squoon like prefaces that does not do something very um helpful to understand from the previous ones and for the one to come for the part to come like everything just kind of meshes really well with that little connector right there Mm -hmm. I agree I think it was really cool I like yeah. I like uh, unique layouts for books. I also like a classic book layout. <laughs> but um, the other thing I like is when you write a series and all the books match. So I think it would have been really cool if that was like his thing and he did that for all the books. I think that would have been great. I think, I don't know, it's a little weird just doing it on the last one, but I get it. It was a longer book. He probably wanted to change it up. Uh, but yeah, I, th- I think that was cool, and I think it would have been really awesome if he did it for all of them. The only bad thing with this is if they ever yeah. make a movie out of this, it's going to be really annoying for the directors and all that. <laughs> yeah, to go back and Yeah, forward. just to kind of say, how, how are we going to format this? You know, because you obviously have to make this into yeah. two movies. It's like with Harry Potter, like, did you really have to make it into two movies? And with Harry Games, you're like, do you really have to make it into two movies? But the one in the Wolf King, you're like, yeah, we actually yeah. we had to make it into two movies. But um, it's like, yeah. do you end... Or four movies, yeah. just do one for you. But do you end with Scree... At the end of the first movie is because it's not a great ending, in my opinion. Yeah. And yeah, you you kind of go back and forth, and do you end at the end of the first part kind of thing, because it's really hard to integrate that. Yeah, I think. 
if we're talking about this right now, I think that they should just, if they were doing this, they should just flip back and forth, like, whatever happens in, um, the monster in the, in, um, the hollows, um, it should happen in Scree, yeah. like, whatever happens there, just kind of go back and forth, like, across yeah. the sea, and then you go, um, uh, you have a certain like flashbacks with Bonifer Squoon. Like every time you see Bonifer Squoon, you have a little bit of a flashback for him seeing something else that had happened from a like memory. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that could be cool. I really want to see them make a movie out of this. Oh, of course, that'd be awesome. Well, if they yeah, definitely. Cool. What did you guys think about the blind? I'll play a fan. Yeah, yeah. What did you guys think about the blind plopping? Oh, I, I think that sounds so fun. Me and uh, one of my best friends, we like to do a lot of outdoors type stuff like that, and he's really into hunting and camping and fishing and all that good stuff. And so sometimes his dad will just joke while we're in the car, and he'll be like, why don't I just drop you two off somewhere and see if we, see if y'all can get home. You know, you can give me your phones. We'll just see how long it takes y'all. And we're both like, yes, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. And he's like, I, w he's like, I, I really would, but your, your mother's wouldn't yeah. be happy. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, I love the blind plopping idea. Um, that was a really unique idea on um, AP's part, oh, just I'm doing AP. that. And you <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I think it was really cool. I think the name is fun. <laughs> blind plopping. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey. Could be you ain't a man till you've been blind plopped before, right? <laughs> well, yeah, the Cooper's people that didn't make it died. So. No, nobody's ever died. All I need is a well, legendary sword and a blindfold and a really nasty Oh, yeah, muffin. definitely. I don't know. After reading it, mm -hmm. maybe you want to go eat a honey muffin, but that's just me. <laughs> you know, I actually, I kind of forgot that was in this book. Like, I didn't forget the, the whole blind plopping part. I just, I was, I'm so far past that now and so much yeah, has definitely. happened. And that's like, I kind of forgot that whole thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I never. Yeah, so. Go ahead. While Matthew's on this topic, um, I real for um uh, the War and the Wolf King and um the Monster in the Hollows, it meshes too well for me. Like the first parts, it just squishes so good that I forget which one is which. Like it just feels like it's one book as you're going through. Yeah, definitely. And it shows how like well it was written because they connect perfectly. Definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm it's almost like Andrew Peterson wrote one giant book and then just split it at one random yeah. point. It's like, well, maybe, that's going to be the end of this much, book. But like... <laughs> it's my personal opinion that um, uh, when he finished this book, he went, had a meal, and came right back to start the War in yeah. the Wolf King. That's just you my probably personal did, opinion. Yeah. Matthew, you were going to say something? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say I like, I like it when it's a... Uh, when it picks up maybe not like right after but like pretty pretty close because uh, there's a lot of books or i'd say most books actually if it's going to be a series or if there's going to be like a some kind of chapter cut off or part cut off or something like that then the the, the author will try to make there be a, a gap and then he'll try to spin the first couple chapters maybe the first chapter looking back on what happened and explaining that and then going forward sometimes I'd, I'd, I'd actually say most of the time authors don't do that Definitely amazingly not. and it can get a little confusing. I, I'm sure I'm sure uh, Andrew Peterson could have done it well, but I think it's just harder to do it that way and it's sometimes a lot more fluent like Tanner was saying today. Yeah, it's like way. Tolkien really did that. He's like, oh no, a battle scene's coming up. I gotta skimp out and then fast forward and then tell about it, you know, like in The Hobbit. I feel like he kind of started that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ugh. I will say, I mean, I'm always bragging about J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter. She does that. I mean, every summer, you you get to see a certain amount of summer, but you usually don't see the first couple months of the summer. You usually mm -hmm. hear about it for the first couple chapters of the next uh, book, which she does a pretty good job of it. But I think mm. there's some. Room it's not for that important in anyway. It, but like, yeah, Tolkien's like we we spent like the entire book working up to this battle, and you're just gonna skimp out. Okay, whatever. Hey, I love Tolkien. <laughs> I love The Hobbit. It's true. It's true. All right. So, when we're talking about blind plopping, you know, at the, like, the end of that chapter, it says, like, Janner made it, never made it back to Chimney Hill, right? Did that guy's kind of ruin mm -hmm. the story for you a little bit? 
Or did that kind of enhance your, like, let me Not turn the really. page and see what happens next? It, it was, I mean, for me, it was just listening to it. Yeah. So. Well, but, yeah, if I was reading it, I would definitely be the second option. Like, just let's just turn the page, yeah. see what's next and all that. Yeah, because I was, see, I was already interested enough at that point, the way the chapter cut off, that I... I was going to read the next chapter anyway. It's not like I was going to be like, oh, that's a chapter. I'm going to go to bed or go do something else. I was like, I was already intrigued enough, so I don't think it was necessary. And it just, it, it did kind of spoil it a little bit, like you said. Yeah. Definitely. Well, guy. Oh. I'm tempted to do as the Bible says and cut off my tongue. Why? Uh, you want to say what? something? Yes, I do. And if my tail. And if my tongue starts wagging, it ain't okay, gonna stop. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, we don't want to see Tanner wag wait, his tail. What? I've seen it happen before. It's not pretty. Okay. <laughs> I said my tongue. Oh, tongue. Did I say tongue? Did I say tail? You said, said tail. tail. Yeah, it ain't pretty, man. It ain't pretty. <laughs> well, I'm super sorry for that. <laughs> I'm okay. super sorry okay. for that, my I meant really I meant tongue. to say my tongue. Tanner's tongue starts wagging. It ain't gonna stop. You said it's not pretty. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. Okay. Let's be on. Let's be on. Weird. No, 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 no. Well, Matthew, mm. <laughs> what'd you think about <laughs> the dang about fangs of dang? Some more fangs. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I'll say I liked bringing in another fang. You know, because they brought in like a new fang the last three books in a row. Or I guess they. Okay, I guess they brought in the wolf fangs in the, at the end of North or Be Eaten, technically. But like, they just keep cop, uh, keep running in new fangs I can't talk they keep bringing in new fangs and I think that's interesting um, and they did I'll, I'll say this real quick before I say the other thing I wanted to say like later in the book when they're in the tunnels and uh, stuff in Dungtown there's like the two fangs who are fighting the green oh, yeah, fang and the gray fang and you see like differences between them I thought that was a good little part to compare them even though like the main story right then was about Merrily like they were just uh, Andrew Peterson was just kind of explaining the differences between the fangs. Like, one of them could smell better, one of them couldn't. And then you had them fighting, and you got to see who won. Anyways, uh, but the other thing I wanted to say about the bat fangs is I thought it was so funny how all of a sudden everybody in Air We Are suddenly knew what bats were. Because before all this, like, before that part in the whole series, bats were not a thing in that world there were cave blats but nobody knew what a bat was and then all of a sudden they're like oh those guys look exactly like bats yeah Let's they never bat mentioned fangs. bat like, how do you know what a bat, bat is? in the book before yeah i thought it was funny definitely mm -hmm. what do you guys i know it wasn't your first time reading this but what do you guys think about the bat fangs the first time you read it tanner and isaiah um i know something like, kind of like Matthew, like, it was just weird that they all of a sudden knew what a bat was. Because, like Matthew said before, that they literally never mentioned a bat at all. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's true. Um. So, that was kind of weird. I, I mean, I was, before reading that, I was kind of, like, thinking, like, or wondering if there'd be a new kind of thing. Yeah. Because they brought it in with the gray fangs and then now the bat or then the gray fang so i was wondering if andrew peterson would keep it up in every book and add a new type of fang in mm -hmm. so Tanner? yeah i just like the bat fangs um i'm actually looking for something right now because i thought forgot where the certain place is and i don't want to spoil anything okay. for matthew right now but um yeah the bat fangs are um really just uh i like those ones they're actually my favorite type of fang oh really um th they're much cooler they they they're fangs that can fly i mean that's much oh, yeah. cooler oh yeah flying is way cooler than not flying i mean plus the fact that they can echo locate I mean, they're cooler they're not my favorite uh, type of thing but i mean cooler. they can echo locate i mean that's just my favorite crazy. is still the gray humans fang have humans that can echo locate the gray fang is my favorite one well guys a little later on we get the return of the footnotes with General Fibby Hoop. I am glad that oh. he, he uh, included another footnote. Ah, oh, man, I missed the footnotes. Footnotes. What did you guys think about that footnote, the one with General Fibby Hoop in the shoe-shaped lake? 
I have no idea what you're talking about because in Audible they didn't read the phone. Oh, that's so sad. For me, I don't remember them reading Hold it. On, why don't you find it and read it to us? Okay, people? let me see. I don't know if they have. Yeah. I remember something about that. I don't remember specifically. I should tell you, I'm reading off an ebook because I gave Matthew mine. And it's actually really easy to get it off of the library. But anyway, I'll look for it. Here, let's see here. Um, General Fiddy Hoops Scout. Yeah, here it is. Kamala had no way of knowing this, but south of Grick in the Troll Kingdom, there is in fact a lake in the shape of a shoe. So Kamala was telling the uh, Ridge Runners there was a lake in the shape of a shoe, which was discovered by these very Ridge Runners after a 17-year quest. This expedition was later known as the Fiddy Hoop Quandary, and the descendants of those Ridge Runners remain scattered throughout the jungles of Plans to this day. Ah, uh, so silly. I still mm. like footnotes, though. I think they're fun. What do you guys think about the footnotes overall in Looking for the Saga? Yeah, I, I really like the footnotes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, none of them have been as good as the first no, books, though. Not. Those were just hilarious. They were all hilarious. Um, the second books were more informative, like we said yeah. before. Third books were pretty good. This, this this book has only had, like, one or two so far. Well, I didn't ask it in but, the beginning... But what did you guys think about the Warden and the Wolf King? What are you guys' just overall thoughts on it? Best scenes, stuff like that? I didn't ask that. Oh, I mean, can I, you want me to bring up the best scene now? Sure. In my opinion? So far, I mean, obviously I haven't read the whole thing. My favorite scene has been in the Scree section when Artham is telling their, the stories about uh, Anira. And, like, that's what that's the part when I really started noticing the analogies yeah. a lot. And, like... I, I don't know. Let me find a section of that to read. Like, there's one paragraph that I really like. Hold on just a second. Tanner, is it what about you? Someone else can talk. I mean, I said it before. This is my favorite book for the Wing Feather yeah. Saga. So, yeah, I just liked it a lot. I mean, it, like, earlier in this episode, when I, uh, one of the reasons I already said it earlier, but uh, was because, like, all the detail, like, the attention to detail, everything that, like, was said before and you thought oh well like in other books like oh that's all it was here for whatever you find out later actually had a bigger purpose in the final book yeah like this is my favorite wing feather saga book too like there once again because i'm just one of those people that loves a very well thought out book like where everything has a purpose there's nothing that doesn't have a purpose and this was one of those books like there was no point in time where the um there was a person or like something like that looks entirely um like unimportant like we'll bring this up in the next episode but there are just so many instances why um there is just this great um planning i don't know even know if it was planning or just him reading through the books again but he found so many great ways to tie in things from book one like book one i've got a few um i've got a page over here that's got um about three three or four lines of uh, just references of things that have been brought back from book one into the Warden and the Wolf King and the later books that have just proved to be extremely influential and um, necessary for this book to be possible. All right, Matthew, you found it yet? Yeah, do you want me to do it now or you want to wait till next oh, that's episode? That's probably true. We went to next episode. I think it's about time to stop yeah, anyway. So... You're right. All right, we're reading next episode. Yeah, I'll read this. I'll read this. All right, guys, time for donor shout outs. All right, what are we going to do this time? Donor shout outs. Let's go. Um, what are we doing this time? We are comparing donors to non main characters. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Uh, can start? Give me a name, Cooper. Like you can't use you can't use any of the wing feathers you can't use any of the ones we've already done basically why don't we just try to do the ones on on the scree side of things are we right. Right? Yeah. all right we have a brand new noter <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> brand new donor Isaiah's cousins are starting to donate yes. donors 
Oh, yeah, it's right down there. Mm-hmm. Isaiah's cousins. Isaiah, why don't you share your cousins' names and then share the characters they most represent? Oh, boy. Um, so my cousins' names are uh, Moses and Zara. Uh, I'm trying to think of names. I really Thank you don't for donating, remember. Moses and Zara. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. I don't really remember any other names. Hmm. Um. I seriously don't remember any names. I mean, we said wow. We could okay. use well. Why Tanner, don't, Tanner okay. was eager to go? Wait, who Zara did you say be, we can't Tanner, use? Zara can be Marilyn. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, I thought you said we could use. Zara can be Marilyn. Never mind. Uh, okay. What, Moses can be um Bor. What's yeah, his name? Borley. Right? Borley's a good character. Borley. Yeah, he can be Borley. The general. Who's Borley? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the general. That's right. Yes. So you guys get to be Borley and Marley. Right. They're great Tanner, characters. Both you get Nana. Characters. Okay, she will be Alster Will, even though he lives on both <laughs> oh. sides of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nana, Alrighty. I sincerely apologize. Alster Will is the guy He's who... basically the... Uh, <laughs> Alster... Isn't he the... Uh, is it Kane? He's the Kane of the story. Yes. He's, he's like... I don't know who to compare him to. <laughs> he's basically just makes every like all the annoying little things that happen in your day to day life. That's just a little happen. poem, the little thing. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. Alrighty, it's Isaiah. Funny, actually, we might read in the. Isaiah, last you can one. get. Yeah, you Me? can get your grandparents. What about you? Well, you didn't do them, though. Me and get my grandparents. One. That's true. Uh, my grandpa could be. Oh gosh, what's his name? The, Armlin the Bard. Oh yeah. My grandma. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Nergabog. Yes. Oh, okay, her, yeah. Okay. Um, who am I going to eat, guys? You get Becky. Becky? Yeah, you get Becky. Um, yes. Trying to think of a girl who's not Sarah Cobbler, Lily. <laughs> um, <laughs> what about that? Oh, yeah. Girl, um, uh, when... Laura, Lori? Something, what's her name? It starts with an L. Oh, Wendelin, that's not one, is it? Yeah, Wendelin Egaby, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was, Wendelin's... yeah. Wendelin's Poto's wife, yeah. You can be Wendelin Egaby, yay. Okay. Yeah, you'll be dead. You can be Wendelin. <laughs> Who do I get? You can get... Who else do? Yeah. Uh, my uncle. Sevy. Yeah. Sevy, you're a good old Claxton Weaver. Oh, yeah. The All stranger right, and then, Tanner, you can get my grandparents. And Pappy and Wayla. We will go with uh, Janner Igaby, the uh, old, the old one, the old one. Janner, no, about still the same person. Janiber, thank you, thank you. Janiber Igaby and um, whatever his wife's name was. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Okay, harsh words. Okay, well guys, if you want to do our shout out. <laughs> You couldn't think of anybody. <laughs> if, you, if you want a donor shout out, please go to patreon.com forward slash booking it. Donate you know any you of our four levels. You know you want one. And uh, we want your money. <laughs> no, um, we'd be great, great, great money. Um, please make sure to rate and review us on your favorite podcasting app. And until next time, keep on booking it.